Boris Berezovsky's self-imposed exile in London and the south of France since 2000 was his way of escaping Russian court prosecutors. In his last interview, he said he longed to return to his own country. He had lost his standing amidst Kremlin inner circles when he became a fierce critic of Vladimir Putin. Eventually, his fortunes plummeted and he sank into debt. A former mathematician, when the old Soviet empire crumbled, he'd managed to profit from sweeping privatizations. Among his powerful friends was Boris Yeltsin. Here's how a British expert described him. Boris Berezovsky is in some ways the archetypal and original Russian oligarch. He was initially one of the richest. Uh, he made his money through uh, cars and through uh, metals and through oil. He was able to force his way through the pack and to become one of the most influential businessmen. And business and politics are very intertwined in Russia. They are now, and they were in the 90s. And, and he had influence with then-President Yeltsin. Berezovsky and fellow oligarchs raised some serious cash for Yeltsin's campaign in the 1996 elections, and he won. It wasn't just the money, it was also through this business elite's control of television networks. Berezovsky was soon named to high official positions, at one stage even Deputy Secretary of Russia's Security Council, or playing a government role in removing Russian forces from Chechnya, negotiating a peace treaty there and helping to coordinate the economic reconstruction of the war-torn country. At the end of the 1990s, Yeltsin's reign was drawing to a close, and Berezovsky's circle favoured a relative unknown to succeed him, Vladimir Putin. It was to be the death knell for Berezovsky's ambitions. Of course, Putin was not Yeltsin. Yeltsin was a much weaker man. And so when Putin came in, he felt the oligarchs had too much power. And Berezovsky, as the leading oligarch in many ways, was sidelined. He was made an example. Granted political asylum in Britain, Berezovsky dreamt of overthrowing Putin. The Russian authorities tried him in absentia on charges of criminal fraud and found him guilty, but he was not extradited. Other countries, such as Brazil and France, acted against him, his property or transactions, with or without Moscow asking them to. Last year in London, his loss in a huge case claiming civil damages from another Russian businessman, Roman Abramovich, took another crushing toll.